Welcome to Fresh Word. We're delighted to be here with you today. This is Dolores Johnson Spears sharing the Word of God with you. Uh, we just want to brighten your day. We know that the Word of God can lift us up. The Word of God is Jesus himself. We can't do wrong uh, when we spend time in the Word of God. So we're going to be reading from Proverbs 24 today. Uh, beautiful scripture that gives us wisdom and we uh, desire wisdom today God's way to hear what he's saying about a matter and to consider it in that vein is a wise uh, thought wise thinking when we take a matter and hear what God has to say about it it's just absolutely wise thinking and of course we learned that from uh, Solomon himself as he took on the role of king. And, and I'm sure he knew a lot, but he knew that he would know more with God. He knew he didn't know enough. Uh, we can't do much by ourselves. Without God, we can do nothing. That's St. John uh, 15. So I'll be reading from uh, Proverbs 24 briefly, just a few verses, and then we'll share from that. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is an house built, and by understanding is it established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Many of you are probably thinking about Psalms 37, and it starts off almost the very same way. Fret not thyself against those who do evil. So uh, God wants to remind us today that we see people flourishing. We see people uh, getting what they want materially. And uh, he wants to remind us that he, he has nothing against wealth. He, he does not want us to... I want what somebody else has. He does not want us to covet, but he really doesn't have anything against wealth. Uh, and, and we should not measure that, measure a man's heart by the wealth that he has. He's bringing out very clearly in Proverbs 24, as well as Psalms 37, that if that man of those people that have this great wealth, which is nothing wrong with it, we're not to be angry with them because they have great wealth, and they do not have Christ, and they do not have him as Lord of their life, then, then they're going to have some problems uh, ultimately. It's not going to be well with them. Uh, John St. John 15 again says, without God, we can do nothing. Whatever we do, it's going to amount to nothing if God is not a part of it, if he's not the head of it. So he's also saying, don't be angry. Don't be jealous of them. Uh, sometimes we go through storms. We don't have materially uh, what we desire to have. Some of us have worked very, very, very hard. And because of circumstances, we still may not have that that we want to have. And we look at another man's yard or, or, or another man's house or car or whatever. And, 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 and sometimes we have to fight jealousy and God is saying, don't be envious. Do not feel like you've been left out because that man, if that man has not received the Christ and I'm talking about a man or woman or whatever, then that man is not going to flourish at ultimately at the very end, you're going to see them just uh, lose out. We're not desiring that. We don't want that for anybody. But God says, especially if they're working evil, that's the point. If they're working evil, why would you envy them? You know, if you know that they're getting their finances the wrong way, if you know that uh, they accomplished a lot in life, but they kept rejecting God, which means that in many cases, they are mistreating people. And you know that these people, although they're wealthy, they're mistreating people. They flourish uh, uh, with evil deeds. God is saying, do not feel left out. Don't believe that you've lost out. 
he said, you're going to look up one day and you're not going to be able to find these people. Stay in the narrow path. Stay on God's side. Stay with God, even if you're facing poverty, even if you have not received financially everything that you think that you have need of. I do believe God is going to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Sometimes when he supplies, it's not the way we want. You know, sometimes it's not exactly uh, what we wanted. But this is just a pit stop on earth. This is just a journey here. We have an eternal resting home. We have a heaven in our view. And in heaven, God has promised us so much. Uh, uh, wealth is just a word. Streets of gold, uh, pearly gates, just so much enjoyment in heaven. Again, God is saying, fret not. You know, this life is so much bigger than wealth. Yes, we need uh, uh, a certain materials to, to uh, uh, prosper in life, to even just survive. There are certain things we have to have. We have need of food and water. We have need of clothing. We have need of shelter. But God is saying, do not a waste time being envious, being jealous, because you see someone that seemed to be flourishing and prospering way more than you. God says, if that person is evil, if that person is not in him, then um, uh, that person will not continue to prosper and you won't miss anything. You aren't missing anything. And I tell you the thing to do, unless God stops you, is to pray for that person. Just get in prayer for them. You know they're working evil deeds. You know it seems like they are the wealthiest uh, people in the neighborhood or in the city, but you know that they're working evil deeds. I believe the Lord would bless you if you would just pray for them, pray for them, but uh, do not waste time being jealous of them because they have an eternity that nobody desires. They, if, if, if they don't change, if they don't repent, they're going to be dealing with a, an eternity that no one desires. And this is not a fairy tale. I want you to know that this is real and this is what it comes down to. And this is what the debate is about. Many times people just do not believe that we're going to have an eternal life. They believe that this is the end. That's why they do so much in the 80 years, the 100 years, the 120 years, uh, even sh shorter than that sometimes, and we cover that with the blood of Jesus Christ. They spend so much time spinning their wheels doing what they desire to do. And, 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 and God says, no, the design, what he wanted was that we would just plug into him, allow him to be Lord and Savior, and then he'll show us how to navigate through this life how to navigate through this life successfully. God does not mind us having uh, riches like we said before. Remember the rich young ruler, uh, but we have to commit it unto him. We're just stewards of it. Every penny we have belong to God. We're just stewards of it. And remember the rich young ruler, um, after he talked to Jesus, he literally uh, told him, well, you know, I'm, in, I'm, I'm perfect in all of those ways uh, when it comes to the commandments. You know, I do what uh, I've been instructed to do uh, by Jewish law. And, and, and Jesus called him on it and said, well, I tell you what, sell what you have and give to the poor. And he backed up because he felt like the money belonged to him. He felt like these riches I worked hard for, and I'm not get, you know, I'm not paraphrasing. He refused to trust God with it. And, 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 and what's going to happen to him or what happened to him or what happens to people who have a mindset that what they have belonged to them. I'm telling you every penny that that rich young ruler had, every penny that you have, every penny that I have, belonged to God himself. If he tells us to give it away, that's what we need to do. I'm not saying it's easy. Uh, uh, you, you may have plans for that money. You may have saved that money. You may have bills uh, that require that money. But I'm telling you, 
when we allow him to be Lord and Savior and we yield to his spirit, when he calls for an offering, and he has already made it very, very clear that we are to give. And if we give, it's going to be given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will men give into our bosom. So, so, so that's a promise that we can hold on to. And that's a promise that the rich young ruler was probably not familiar with because he was going to get it back. That's just God's way. If we give then it's going to be given back unto us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. We've already done that scripture. But he wants us to know that he's faithful, that he loves us more than we love ourselves, and uh, he wants us to be successful. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to have prosperity, good health. That's a part of a prosperity, just having good health as well. And so the rich young ruler lost out because... He didn't have enough faith in God. God wants us to be a part of his family to the point that we trust Father. We trust Daddy. We trust the Holy Spirit. We trust our elder brother, Jesus. And when I divide them up like that, they're still one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he wants us to trust them that if he asks us to give away something that he's allowed us to steward because it all belongs to him, then, then, then we should trust him. And we may have to ask him for help. Lord, help me. You know, because I had something planned. I, I, I had something planned for your money. Help me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to give it the way you say give it. And uh, so this rich young ruler proved a point. Sometimes we have to plug into the Lord to the point that uh, uh, our... Uh, thoughts and our heart's desire will measure up with his. That if he says give, at some point it'll be easy because I've allowed my heart to align with the heart of God. And, and, and that's why uh, Solomon talks about wisdom in Proverbs 24. That's why uh, uh, Psalms 1, and no, Proverbs 1, I believe about verse 5, talked about a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. We were taught that in school, we would start our social studies class. We'd have to stand up and recite that about a wise man. And it was like a treasure because it ultimately got into our hearts. Back then it was okay. There was no stressing about reading Bible scriptures. I thank God for that. I learned so much, even at school, about scripture. But we spoke about this wisdom, the wisdom of God, and uh, Solomon sought after it. And so today we need the wisdom of God. God says don't get frustrated about those things that are okay, already uh, in place. Don't allow a person's lifestyle to frustrate you because at some point, if you keep getting jealous and envious because you see somebody's lifestyle and uh, you don't particularly like it because yours, you think you look uh, terrible in your lifestyle against their lifestyle because things have been easy for them, God says, you, literally, we're wasting time. It's not a wise thing to be envious. It's not a wise thing to covet. And I started off by saying he does not mind us having wealth, but he does not want us to covet. He does not want me to go after something that somebody else has. He wants me to uh, be at peace with what I have. And then if I need more, if there's a... a uh, need for more, I'm to go to my father. I'm to let him know uh, that I have need of more and, and, and not to waste time being jealous. And I, I really thought it was important to get that point across today. I want you to ask God to uh, uh, allow it to marinate in your hearts because we live this life and we want it to give glory to God. I want my life to give glory to God. I know you do too. The only way we can do it, there's some things we just cannot do by making up our minds to do it. We have to ask the Spirit of God. We have to ask God to help us. You know, we, we're not our own. We're bought with a price. He didn't intend for us 
to have to be strong in ourselves. Every scripture almost that you find out about strength, that strength is in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Uh, be, I can do all things through Christ, not by myself, through Christ. So, so if you find yourself envious today, you know, don't beat yourself up. And you probably hadn't told anybody, that's your secret with God, that you feel a little jealousy when you're around certain people. Let's ask God for help. That is not a virtue that he wants us to have, envy. It's not good. It's not of God.